Hi everybody, Andrew Ames of Golf Academy here. As always, thanks for watching, thanks for tuning in. Bit of a fun one, this one. Um, a guy came in for a fitting on a ping driver the other day, said he was time he upgraded, and um, he gave me his old driver. Now, I don't know how well known this brand is if you're watching in America or Canada or Australia. It's Dunlop. I know Dunlop is a big brand name, but in golf clubs, they've kind of had a a bit of a sort of a checkered past of late. The brand's been bought and sold several times and unfortunately now it's it's right down there at the sort of the bargain basement end. It, a lot of this stuff is sold um, in sports stores. We won't, no names need to be mentioned, but I guess it has a price point to fill. And this driver, from what I can find out, it's not in the current range at the moment, I think this would have retailed in the UK for around about between 16 and 20 pounds. So about 25, 28 dollars, US dollars is an equivalent. So we're not talking a lot of money here. So I thought, wouldn't it be fun just to hit a few shots with this and see if we can get, see what it does really. Um, it says on the bottom, it's a Dunlop True Tech driver. Now it says it's forged. Now, what it's forged out of, I'm not sure, so I can't really <laughs> give you any information. That's 11 degrees of loft. It looks like a 460cc head. It's fitted with a graphite shaft. It says it's regular. It's called the Power Transfer System, a PTS. The one thing I noticed instantly about this is how much twist, how much torque is in here. I'm just holding on to the grip. Uh, just watch how much I can move this head, and I'm not applying an awful lot of pressure. So. You know, there's an awful lot of sideways twist here, which I think is going to make it difficult for the club head to square up. And I was hitting a few shots in practice, losing a lot of shots out to the right, which is not my normal shot. My bad shot, if anything, would, would go left. It's 45 inches long. Um, let's give it a hit. Let, let's kind of see what we can do with a, a $25 driver. GC2 down on the deck. Got a selection of premium golf balls to hit. Let's hit a couple. And that's not a bad hit, that folks. It would hit fairway. <laughs> I normally carry my ping, I'm using a ping G driver at the moment. I'm carrying that round about 260, maybe 265 if I really get hold of one. That was pretty good actually, I don't think I could hit it an awful lot better than that. Let's have a look at the numbers. Let's flash that up on the screen for you. So, got at it a little bit from the inside. My normal sort of swing path, club gets a little bit trapped inside. And I then have to try and release the face a little bit close to bring it back. Got 99 miles an hour club speed. I've got a 245 carry running out to 269. <laughs> Backspin 23.50 and a launch angle of 13 and a half degrees from a $25 driver. That's not bad, is it, really? To be, <laughs> I didn't expect that. So, you know, what does this tell us? Does this tell us that spending $400 on a driver is, is a waste of time? Well, no, because would I feel comfortable playing this driver in a, in a real game of golf? I wouldn't, because I know that the margin with this club is not that great. I know that I wouldn't have to be too far off here to hit a blocky one. I just happened to get that one squared up. Let's, let's hit another one for you. Now that was the shot I was hitting a lot of. Now, I could feel the club there was so open as I hit it. And that, that amount of torque in the club there just left the club face wide open. Couldn't square it up in time, face was wide open, and that has gone miles right, folks. Wasn't a bad swing, didn't feel much different to the first one, to be honest. Did get at it a little bit too much from the inside, a long way from the inside. Almost felt like the club was trapping back behind me. Let's just have another little look at that. I'm gonna try and keep the club a little bit more in front of me on this one, on the down swing. Better, but again, just felt like the club face was opening up a little bit on me. But it's interesting, you know. You know, I know there's a lot of people who are going to watch these videos and say, "Well, it's this, it's that, it's the other." But if you just, 
you know, starting in this wonderful game of golf and you just want something to get yourself going, you know, do you go and spend £250 or $400 on a driver or should you start with something pretty basic like this? I guess it depends on how much money you've got to spend and all the rest of it, but this is fairly hittable. I'm going to swing on at about 80 miles an hour, 85 if I can, see what that gives us. So hard trying to slow down. <laughs> Try that again. I'm just trying to change my speed, swing speed here, folks, from sort of 100 down to sort of 80, 85, and at the same time launch one, and it's it's quite hard. I'll have one more go. Okay, that's okay. Pretty straight, wasn't it? Let's see what we get out of that. Club speed felt 85. 84 miles an hour club speed so no disrespect to any other golfers out there because everyone swings it differently uh, a lot of people i teach will swing a driver at 85 86 miles an hour so if you were coming in at 84 85 miles an hour that gave me a carry of 194 pretty straight pretty good numbers so there we go a dunlop true tech driver 25 dollars ish to buy when it was new is it hittable? Yes, it is. Would I use it? No, I wouldn't. Um, would I not use it because of the name? Not so much the name, just, you know, the shaft technology in there, the head technology, but quite hittable and quite an interesting experiment, I thought that. So thanks for watching. Be interested to get your views and opinions on uh, less expensive golf clubs, your experiences of it. Has it been good experience, bad experience? Did you change your 50 pound driver to a 400 pound driver, 300 pound driver and see no difference? Or did you get the reverse effect? Who knows? Be good to hear from you. Thanks for watching. All the best.